axe handle Saturday, 60 years later. This Thursday marks the commemoration of the day when a mob of whites armed with axe handles and bats attacked black demonstrators trying to integrate lunch counters in downtown Jacksonville. The attack left hundreds injured, bleeding, and traumatized. Over the next several days leading up to Thursday, News 4 Jax is telling the stories of some of those who faced danger in the struggle for desegregation. Janice Harris is joining us now to bring us the story of one Jacksonville man who knew he had to take that risk, Janice. Yes, he did, Tom. And in fact, before NASA or any man walked the moon, in the 1950s, Alton Yates was one of seven men in the Air Force that risked their lives for space exploration tests in the United States. And yet, Yates says he feared death more, returning home to Jacksonville to peacefully protest for integration and equality in the River City. One of the worst days was August 27, 1960, now known as Axe Handle Saturday. Before the United States could celebrate its first successful mission into outer space, seven men, among many others in the Air Force, volunteered for the America Space Program in New Mexico. Jacksonville native Alton Yates was one of those seven men. Our job to determine the effect of space travel on the human body. Depending on the configuration. This is a News for Jack's archive story from 1977 of Yates describing what it was like to endure those tests. First time around, my head might feel as though you know, someone is just pulling it open. He did the test dozens upon dozens of times over four and a half years. When the experiments were over, it was time for Yates to go home to Jacksonville. And it was on that journey home that I ran into prejudice and discrimination and threats. A 1,600-mile drive home filled with segregation. In his military uniform, he was refused food and restrooms. His life was threatened several times. For his safety, he made one stop at a grocery store and bought a loaf of bread and a jar of peanut butter. And that was all he ate until he got home safely. What did you do next? When I got home, I would do everything in my power. I would work just as hard to try to get rid of those conditions as I worked to try to help get the Air Force into space. At 23 years old, he joined the NAACP Youth Council and became its vice president. On Saturday, August 27, 1960, before a planned peaceful protest, Headed to Lower Presbyterian Church, Yates saw the men that would attack him and others for being black. What I saw was a man standing on the back of a truck, the back of a truck from a local hardware company, and he was passing out axe handles. The youth council left the church and headed to a downtown diner for the sit-in protest. Yates and others went to Woolworth's department store. And a large number of them came charging into the store and that's where they confronted us with the axe handles. They started beating at us with the axe handles. Yates was hit in the back of the head. He and others escaped and ran to Snyder Memorial Church for safety. I felt fear. I felt hatred. I felt that people simply wanted to hurt me because of the color of my skin. And I had not felt that before. After several months, an agreement was reached and lunch counters in downtown Jacksonville were integrated. Yates would go on to push for civil rights and a better Jacksonville. He served in the Air Force, Reserve, and Florida Air National Guard, retiring as a lieutenant colonel with a total of 32 years of service. Yates also worked at City Hall for then-Mayor Hans Tanzler. When Yates looks back at his time peacefully protesting for integration in Jacksonville, he fondly remembers the NAACP Youth Council that he served. They were willing to risk their lives to save Jacksonville and make it a better place, just like the men in the Air Force were willing to risk their lives to get into outer space so that space would not be dominated by one of our adversaries. This month, Mr. Alton Yates turned 84 years old and celebrated his 60th wedding anniversary. He lives in Jacksonville. Yates also made a difference in the community through the Florida Education Council anti-poverty agency, Greater Jacksonville Economic Opportunity. He also received a master's from Occidental College in Los Angeles. He also graduated from Stanton High School, class of 1954 
and he grew up right here in La Villa. Tom? Janice, a remarkable man in so many ways, very talented, very educated, and gave up an opportunity to go to a prestigious school of the arts, right? That is correct, Tom. Uh, Mr. Yates was offered a scholarship to Juilliard School of Music, but he had to serve his country and his community, hmm. so he did not go. He made a lot of sacrifices for Jacksonville and for this country.